are you doing? The barrel has to be clean, Mama. Old powder, dust gets in it. What for? I told you. And I told you we don't get criminals out here. And I told you. The gun is for me. What's up everybody and welcome back to the movie buffer tonight we're going to be reviewing and analyzing night mother night mother is a 1986 american drama film starring sissy spacek and anne bancroft rest in peace it was directed by Tom Moore and written by Marsha Norman, based on Norman's Pulitzer Prize-winning play of the same name. The film was entered into the 37th Berlin International Film Festival. Tom Moore had also directed the play on Broadway. The main character of the movie and play Night Mother is Jessie. Jessie is a middle-aged woman living with her widowed mother, Thelma. Thelma is played by Anne Bancroft and Jessie by Sissy Spacek. One night, Jessie calmly tells her mother that she plans to commit suicide that very evening. Jessie makes this revelation while nonchalantly organizing household items and preparing to do her mother's nails. The resulting intense conversation between Jessie and Thelma reveals Jessie's reasons for her decision to commit suicide and how thoroughly she has planned her own death, culminating in a disturbing yet unavoidable climax. Screenwriter Marsh Norman has written, quote, we all know people who have killed themselves and we are hurt and confused and we would like to understand even if we can't accept what they did night mother directed by tom moore is one of the few films that addresses that need to understand the complex roots of suicide david emile durkheim was a french sociologist and he identified four different types of suicide which are egoistic altruistic anomic and fatalistic Egoistic suicide is seen as stemming from the absence of social integration. It is committed by individuals who are social outcasts and see themselves as being alone or an outsider. This is our main character in the movie Night Mother, Jessie. She does not feel that she is connected to her family, to her mother, who she's living with. She does not feel connected to her brother, to his wife, and to her nieces and nephews. She does not feel connected to her son. She does not feel connected to the world. And as you go through the movie, you'll find that she has really never felt connected to anything except for maybe her father. And then when her father died, she felt lost. The other types of suicide is altruistic. Altruistic suicide occurs when social group involvement is too high. Individuals are so well integrated into the group that they are willing to sacrifice their own life in order to fulfill some obligation for the group. This is primarily what you would probably fall into a cult situation when you have mass murders and many cults, not just Jim Jones, have done this type of thing. Anomic suicide is caused by the lack of social regulation, and it occurs during high levels of stress and frustration. Anomic suicide stems from sudden and unexpected changes in situations. So egoistic and altruistic are the type of suicides where people have thought about this for a while. It's part of their ultimate plan uh, as far as altruistic and egoistic is where they really don't feel like they want to be here. They don't like life. They don't like the world. And they're just kind of working up to figuring out when is the best time to do this. So those two are closely related. Anomic suicide is different. It is one that is spur of the moment 
it is like I'm not, you know, you, you can't take me out alive kind of a situation. So anomic suicide is caused from a lack of social regulation. So this could be it's kind of a similar to a crowd situation where you are fighting for a cause and you're willing to die for this cause, aka January 6th insurrection. There are many other groups who have taken on causes who will, are willing to die for their cause in order to show a similar type of camaraderie, suicide bombings, kamikaze, those kinds of things. The last type of suicide is fatalistic suicide, which occurs when individuals are kept under tight regulation. These individuals are placed under extreme rules or high expectations are set upon them, which removes a person's sense of self or individuality. Slavery and persecutions are examples. Another example is people placing high expectations upon teens. I think a lot of times teens tend to fall into the fatalistic type of suicide, meaning that they feel that they can never live up to their parents' expectations, they can never live up to their friends' expectations or their own expectations of life, so they figure the only way to get out of the stress and everything is to kill themselves. My life is over kind of a thing. They see no other way out of their situation. So fatalistic and anomic suicide is closely related because it is usually a spur of the moment type of suicide. It is, I can't get out of this. I don't know what to do. I'm backed into a corner. I'm never going to be free of imprisonment, slavery, persecution. Um, I'm always going to be kept, you know, in a cage, whether it is physical or mental or both. And they feel the only way to be free is to kill themselves and to move on. So fatalistic and anomic suicide is closely related because it is something that is done not necessarily because of emotional or depression over a long period of time, but something that is they have chosen because this is the only way to do it, as I was saying, kamikaze kind of situation. The movie Night Mother is a gripping tale filled with raw dialogue. Again, it is a fictional depiction of suicide, but I am very sure so many people who have either thought of suicide or have experienced someone in their life who has committed suicide, they can definitely relate to it on a very real life basis. It is moving, it is dramatic, and downright dismal on every level. The main level is that on the outside we can see the paths to our character, main character Jessie, her troubles and happiness. She feels like a total failure in life. She feels she failed her husband, she failed her son, and that she fails herself by not being the kind of person that other people gravitate to. Like for you're acting like some little brat, Jesse. You're mad and everybody's boring and you don't have anything to do and you don't like me and you don't like going out and you don't like staying in and you never talk on the phone and you don't watch TV and you're miserable and it's your own sweet fault. And it's time I did something about it. Not something like killing yourself, something like... It's what you think is true. That's right, it's what I think is true. But I can't do anything about that. No, you can't. And I can't do anything either about my life to change it and make it better, make me feel better about it, like it better, make it work. But I can't stop it. Shut it down. Turn it off like the radio and there's nothing on I want to listen to. It's all I really have that belongs to me. And I'm going to say what happens to it. And it's going to stop. And I'm going to stop it. Like, for instance, her mother, Thelma. Thelma is the complete opposite of Jessie. She looks at life more positively and lets nothing get her down. She knows she's not and never will be, let's say, the Queen of England, and that she's just a simple small town woman, but that does not get her down at all. It does not stop her from living her life. She works with what she has and makes it wonderful. She adores her son, 
her grandkids, even Jessie, her daughter, and she also enjoys her friends and the things that they do together. She gets out, she gardens, she takes life by the horns and she continues to live it. I would imagine that Jessie being around her mother and seeing such a stark difference living with her on a daily basis may have made it worse for her but jesse has to take responsibility as well relationships end people disappoint you and if you're lucky you are able to part ways from each other unscathed but jesse couldn't move past that clearly her husband has moved past it her son was a petty criminal and will never amount to anything probably without going to jail or something else tragic happening to him where he finally decides to make a change in his own life but jesse takes that as a failure as well but no parent is god we raise our kids do the best we know how to do for them and then we send them out into the world where we hope doesn't swallow them whole but ultimately it's up to them as adults just like it was up to us as adults to move on and to make a life for ourselves jesse has made a forever decision to a temporary problem now i have been in the abyss of depression and the darkness of suicide ideation and i know it is a hard place to come out of but in the end it is up to us to either live or die jesse chose to die like so many others have made that fatal choice she didn't see a way out of her torment and when a person has gotten to that point once they have made that decision there is literally nothing you can do to stop them there was a line from another movie single white female where the girl says i don't need a reason to kill myself i need a reason not to and i don't have one and that's the bottom line the person must be able to find a reason to go on so have you seen or are you willing to watch night mother it is a poignant movie with amazing writing and acting if you have lost anyone from suicide i hope this helps you come close to understanding the why and realizing that it was not your fault and if you are someone who is thinking about suicide i hope this makes you realize that there is more to life than this moment this too shall pass Thank you so much for watching. Please leave your comments below. I would love to start a dialogue with those who are willing and wanting to express themselves. And remember, if you or someone you know may be contemplating suicide, please call Suicide and Crisis Lifeline 988. It works just like 911. Or you can text H O M E home to 741741 also the 1-800-273-TALK or 1-800-273-8255 is still available or you are not alone until next time peace to fingers <laughs>